Did I get it? Is it on? Yep, yep, there it goes. Hey, all right. Welcome to Scare Rock RC. Uh, let start a new little series where I'm going to go through all the rigs I have back there. In detail, what's done to them, how they're set up, and where you can get most of all the parts. Um, I do use a lot of common stuff. Some stuff I might have made, nah, whatever. So we're going to start with uh, this, this, this. Hold on. There. That. We're going to start with that. Simply because this thing, excuse the mess over there, it's my wife's uh, overnight bag for when she works. Anyway. Because um, this seems to be kind of the flagship of the channel almost. Uh, and it's the, the Gen 8 uh, V1. So this is a Red Cat uh, Gen 8 V1. And uh, I did put, uh, so, you know, if you followed along on most of the social medias, um, you'll see that I've uh, put the scout body, the or the uh, axe body on there. Um, did the paint. That is a Tamaya. I kept the, that one. PS54, Cobalt Green. I kept this, so I'll remember, because uh, I really like that color a lot. Um, I do like the teal. Um so anyway, let's just kind of go over the body real quick. So as far as the body itself, um, it's just an axe uh, body, clear from, uh, actually, I think I bought it from A-Main. Um, it does have the Club 5 grill. Uh, this is the 19, oh, brain fart, 76, correct me if I'm wrong, um, the grill for it, 3D printed grill, um, that I went and... Let me kind of come a little over here. Went over with a little bit of chrome. You can actually see the reflectiveness of that. That's with the Molotow uh, chrome pen. And back there is actually part of a condenser from a, uh, a Nissan uh, NV200 that I put back behind there. Uh, it was a, little, a bad condenser I got from work. Cut it up and put that behind there as a radiator and... Quite frankly, I think it's quite nicely scale looking. Um, decals got from Amazon or uh, eBay. Um, along with this one, they came as a set. Um, already kind of scratched this up. It, it's bound to happen if you do uh, vinyls on any kind of RC body. If you if you drive it, it's going to get scuffed up. And moving on, um, eh, just stickers. I thought they kind of look cool in this back corner here. Um, uh, I just kind of made like a little toe, like a pull rope. Um, I don't know how functional it is, so I just stuck it up there. Um, and then the seats, I did seat covers and I couldn't find anything. Um, but I found Sriracha and I love Sriracha. So I covered them with that. Um, it's just some general craft glue with that fabric. Um, we got Thor from Thor Love and Thunder in here driving. Got a little beer can down there. Don't drink and drive. Shouldn't be doing that. Um, as far as the interior, I kind of detailed it out a little bit with that Malto pen. Um, nothing crazy. Uh, as you can see, I did add some spacers in here um, to kind of help bring that steering wheel uh, forward some. And that works pretty good. I, his hand will actually hold onto it and stuff. Um, Got Stormbreaker in there. Door handles, also from Club 5. Um, let's see. Let's turn it here to the back side. I am holding this to dear life. It's falling off my little table. Um, so the... Work my hand here. Uh, license plate. Uh, that comes from um, RC Plate Shop. Excellent, excellent quality. It's metal. Um, I actually broke the, that was part of that kit with, uh, from Club 5. I broke the, <laughs> the tailgate handle. Um, it's a little stickers from, uh, Scale Builders Guild. Um, a couple of odds and ends. My UST, uh, sticker. Um, the South of the Border came from Carl Colt. And the little Sasquatch came from, uh, RC Plate Shop as well so 
back up here. Thank you, sir. And then we're going to turn it again. And it's basically the same on the other side. Uh, this also came in the kit um, from Club 5. Uh, door handles and also the wipers, which I did trim out in uh, with the Malto pen. Um, that sticker actually came with the TF2, the RC four-wheel drive set. Um, and there's some Texas dirt. So let's kind of flip this thing back around. I need better recording ability here. But anyway, um, so let's go ahead and get the body off. And we'll show you what we got underneath. And it's attached. Of course it's attached. Do, 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 do. There we go. Okay. So as far as the body, um, flip it over. And um, it does have some magnets in here. Um, these are actually what I did as well as I took some of these little metric screws, put them downwards, uh, one on each corner, and drill the corresponding hole. And I use actually the factory uh, little center caps and that just helps hold the body on because the body will still pop off if you do like a kind of a heavy rollover. Um, so I just did that for extra precaution. Um, the lighting kit here, uh, the controller is actually tucked up under this fender well. Um, this is a, that's a um, Attack RC uh, lighting kit. Um, and it is fully with reverse. It has reverse, brake running lights, it goes and throws the hazards on if you let it sit too long, all that kind of stuff. And there's actually that, that piece of condenser there. So um, you can see that on, and that's the body. And I just backed it with a little bit of white. Um, so as far as the body, that's, that's pretty much that. So let's get to this stuff, uh, the good stuff. So we'll start on the ground here. Um, this is a Hobbywing Fusion Pro 2300 KV, um, and that's pretty much setting everything up. That's the power system, everything in one. This thing is excellent. I absolutely love it. Um, factory pinion gear, um, I have taken apart and re-greased transmission, transfer case, all that stuff, but it's still factory. Um, plastic gears still to this day. This thing is now two years old, two plus years old going on three years old actually um and that's been hanging in there great other than that not much up here has changed um still have the uh stock bumpers front and rear um and that's that's that that's it uh there's nothing crazy about this um as far as radio uh this one does uh run this tactic um and it's hanging in there pretty well so I'm just gonna keep that on. It did, I did notice when I switched the batteries out, it started getting a little corrosion on one of the battery terminals under there. So when it's done, uh, I'll probably go up to the, uh, switch it over to the uh, DX5C, uh, the Spectrum. So let's flip it on its side and you will see that we have um, Proline Hyrax. These are the 4.75s or actually I think the 4.73 on the Trio. Uh, 1.9 bead locks. Um, these you can get from Trill directly or on Amazon. Um, I really just think they work. They're kind of like a turbine style. Absolutely love it. Um, these Hyraxes uh, are not vented and we're still plenty squishy because um, this one I do tend to run into in, in some water. Um, I do run water on these, but these these wheels are quite stunning on this, to be honest, I really do enjoy that. Um, let's go to the servo, I guess, while we're up here. Um, this is just a, uh, is this the Flash Hobby? I think it's the Flash Hobby off Amazon. We've talked about this before on the channel. Um, I run these servos quite often. Um, I did set the BEC up on that. So this is, you know, it's a high voltage servo, 35 kilograms, really fast, really good servo um, for the money, I think. I think they're actually up to, I want to say 50 bucks-ish right now, um, but they're st they're good servos, solid. I've never had any issues out of them. So um, on the front here, we have the brass steering links. These are D-links. You can get them from RC Addicts or you can get them from A-Main as well. 
Um, these are, I did a video on these C hubs. They're just Amazon. I think they were 15, 20 bucks. And that's the factory axle housing. Um, back there, you can see I did put a slightly, just, just enough space. I think that's an eight millimeter hex just to clear that steering there. That is it. I didn't want to make it crazy wide or anything like that. Um, up underneath here, you can see that this is also a D-Link. This is the Pannard. Um, it has, it is the Delrin, um, I actually got the brass and Delrin high clearance um, from D Links. Um, mm -hmm. This is a servo guard from KYX. This is available on Amazon as well. Um, and then up in here, I don't know if you really can tell, but this is the Bauhaus Panner Drop. Um, and that actually works really good to eliminate a lot of uh, the bump steer. Um, that the Gen 8 chassis in general does uh, experience. So moving on from there, let me just flip it upside down completely. And we'll let's get down here. So as you see, these are the brass straights. Um, definitely been rubbing them up pretty good. Um, Delrin uppers. So the uppers are Del Delrin, the lowers are brass. Um, factory drive shaft, factory drive shaft. Here's your high clearance here and here. And then the uh, uppers are high clearance as well. I'm gonna show you what I actually did with these um, for the pinion angle. So, oh, we have some moss. Moss. That's from Texas. Um, anyway, so uh, I was doing a tug of war and um, completely exploded the rear diff, um, the factory one. So this is all trio. Uh, they didn't have the black one in stock, so we got the silver one and then the black portal housings on the sides, and that's all trio. Factory gearing, um, I should mention that this is factory as well. There's no underdrive, overdrive, none of that. Um, as far as the skids, the skid is still red, uh, still red cat. Um, these are still Red Cat. Most of this is actually still Red Cat. Um, so now, what I want to show you a little bit here. Let's see if we can move this thing. There we go. All right. Is the where I've positioned the upper lip. Technical difficulties. I dropped the camera. Anyway, so let's turn the flash on. Okay, so here's your upper link right here. So I have that set in the center. So you got three holes on the Gen 8. You can actually adjust the, uh, this is, Jesus, dirty. Why? I need to clean this thing. Anyway, so you can actually adjust this one, two, three to adjust your wheelbase. Um, and you'll notice that the uppers are in the lower or in the middle spot and the lowers I actually have set to this spot and what that does is that sets this pinion angle so normally if you put that link here this pinion angle is actually going to be up and it's going to be kind of exposed so right now how i have this set these the, the links actually protect the pinion and the drive shaft um, not to mention you get more straight on angles. Now that may be why I've never broken a drive shaft in this thing. Um, as far as shocks go, um, we have desert lizards. These are hundred millimeter and they are set on droop. So, you know, this is it. This is ride height right here, but this thing will go, you know, all the way up. You know that's that's the that's the travel that this truck does have you know so you can just see when i when i pick it up like that this is this is the articulation that this truck gets and that's just that suspension working this thing performs very well overall turn the flash off there we go so 
that's pretty much the Gen 8. Um, trying to think if I've left anything out. And I don't believe I have. Um, you know, this thing has been really good. Um, and even with, you know, when we, when we articulate the front, I mean, look, look at this. I mean, you're like, and it's still, still on the ground. There we go. So, I mean, this is the kind of articulation that you can get, um, with a proper or with a good droop setup. Um, this also really does keep the side hill. Um, side hill does very well with this setup. The only thing I want to upgrade, um, personally is I'm going to check out Flub RC and get some of their, uh, inserts for these tires. Other than that, cause it does have quite a bit of side hill roll with the, with just the stock pro line form, uh, foams. Um, and that's kind of hinders me a little bit, but it's still side hills quite well. Um, I think if we got a good insert in here, this thing would just be flawless. Um, but as you can see, the Gen 8 isn't insanely upgraded. Um, you know, this thing isn't, I mean, I got some money in it, but it's not insane. It's mainly the links. You got some brass here. Um, and as far as the front axle, I will mention, I'm kind of thinking of doing the Gen 9 front axle once I have any more issues out of this. For right now, it's fine. I'm the kind of guy, if it's if it ain't broke, we ain't going to fix it. Um, so, But I was thinking about doing a Gen 9 front axle just for that turning radius. Because right now, you it has just an awesome turning radius. However, this thing... When you do, when I do turn it to this angle, it will bind a little bit. Um, and what it'll do is it'll actually bind and try and wrap this front axle under itself and basically kind of like load up that suspension. And it, 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 when it does it on the rocks, the thing looks so funny because it just, it looks like it just, it, it's bunched up. <laughs> Um, so I got to kind of back off it and let the suspension relax again. Um, so that's really the only driving downfall I have on this thing, um, is that steering angle like that. Um, so I may adjust, um, I would adjust that and do the Gen 9's, uh, universal joint, uh, front axle. So yeah, other than that, there you have it. This is Gen 8. Um, yeah, there you, that's it. You can have a very good, this is a very, very capable crawler very capable truck um it weighs with the body i haven't weighed it but i'm gonna say it's in the good solid probably 10 to 12 pound plus i don't think it's quite at 15 but it's it's a stonky little boy here for sure she, she's she's a stonky one so um, anyway, with that said, that's going to be the first episode um, of the, this is my rigs, as of right now, 2023, the year of this rig. Um, it will change, I'm sure, um, you know, a little bit here and there, like I said, the Flub RCs, uh, once I get the Flub RC inserts, um, you got to pre-order them, they're kind of tough to get, um, so once I get it, once they pop back up and I can get those, um, I'm going to do a review video of them. I'll probably take them down to uh, Paradise Crawl Zone, um, where you've seen some footage before as well. So, with that said, thanks for watching. I'm going to actually I'm gonna have you look at me like that. Yeah. Yeah. Face. Is that good? Probably. I have no idea. Whatever. But anyway, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Drop in the comments. What do you think of it? What do you think it, well, well, you know, anybody got any ideas on what to change on this thing? Because personally, I think it's, I think she's good. Um, so yeah, drop in the comments, let me know what you want to see, what you like to see, what you don't want to see. And, uh, you know, hey, which, which one of these, these rigs do you want to see next? We got some stuff. Oh yeah, by the way, I'm going to dig in my storage unit. And maybe up on the top shelf, you might see 
the Baja 5T show its show its face again. So maybe might dig her out of storage and get some work in. So let me know which one of these doodles here you wanna you know to see what uh, what's going on with these. I'm gonna do the Bronco next. Got to actually quite a bit into this thing. So anyway, y'all have a great time RCN. Keep it fun. Keep it happy. Keep it chill. Have a great weekend. Go out, get dirty, and I'll see you on the next one.